All right, chapter 11, section 5, home maintenance improvement. And these are going to be the answer key to our notes for today. All right, looking at the very first example. Chris wants to have a fence around his entire property, which measures 35 feet wide by 100 feet long. The wooden fence that he wants costs $14 per foot, and the fencing company charges $10 per foot to install it. Calculate the total cost for this project. All right. Uh, so the end goal that we have is to calculate the total cost for this project. All right. So I think situations like this, it's sometimes a good idea to draw a uh, picture. We know that he wants to put a fence around his entire property that measures 35 feet wide by 100 feet long. So. We're looking at a rectangular area. Okay. Uh, 35 feet wide. That's usually the shorter distance. So in this case, the way I drew it, it'll be the top and bottom sides of his rectangular property. Okay. So it very well might be a, um, a house, and he wants to just basically just put a fence all around. 100 feet long. Is a longer side, so we can say right here it's a hundred feet. Same over here, right? Uh, One hundred feet. All right. <clears throat> now we know the wooden fencing is going to cost fourteen dollars per foot, and the fencing company charges ten dollars per foot to install it. So that's all stuff that Chris is going to have to to spend money on, all right? Let's look first at material. So he's going to have to buy the actual wooden fencing, and it's eleven dollars per foot. Uh, so probably the first thing we want to figure out is how much fencing we're going to need, right? So in this case, we're basically calculating the perimeter. All right. So actually, you know what? Let's start with that first, right? Because before I know how much material I'm going to need, I should probably figure out my perimeter, right? Because I want to put fencing all around this. So let's add them up. So in this case, we're looking at perimeter. We're going to take the two widths, so 35 plus 35, plus the two lengths, 100 and 100. We add that all up, we should get 270. And we're looking in terms of feet. All right. So the distance all around this property, the perimeter is 270 feet. Okay. Now we can sort of take a look at the material. <clears throat> now, we know that the fencing is going to cost. Fourteen dollars per feet, per foot. Sorry, and there's two hundred and seventy feet. So to find out how much it's going to be just for material, let's take how many feet we need, two seventy, times how much it's going to be per foot, fourteen. We're going to multiply those together to figure out how much Chris is going to have to spend on just the material. So two seventy times fourteen in your calculator should give you a total of three thousand seven hundred and eighty. Okay. Now keep in mind that's just how much he's going to spend on material. We still need to pay the fencing company to install it. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll call that the uh, the labor cost, right? So again, 270 feet. But this time we're going to multiply it by how much they're charging per foot, which is $10. Okay. You multiply those two together, you should get 2,700. And keep in mind what we wanted was a total cost. So total cost. We're gonna have to take the material, the cost of the material, plus the cost of labor. Okay, so that'll be three thousand seven hundred and eighty plus two thousand seven hundred. Okay, it's gonna give us you can put that in your calculator, you can add uh 
straight down. So 3,780 for material plus 2,700 for the actual labor. It's going to give us a grand total of 6,480. And that right there is my final answer. So Chris wanted to put fence around his entire property. His property measures 35 feet wide by 100 feet long. Wooden fencing is $14 per foot. So the total for material was 3,780. The fencing company is going to charge $10 per foot. So the total cost for labor was 2,700. The total cost for the project, you add the material plus labor, you get a final answer of 6,480. All right, looking at example B. Tia is tired of seeing all the cracks and missing tile on her kitchen floor and is planning on tackling this home improvement project by herself. The local hardware store charges $3.50 per square foot of tile. Find the cost of putting tile floor in a kitchen that is 16 feet long by 12 feet wide. Okay. All right, so <clears throat> she wants to replace her kitchen floor. She's going to do it herself, which tells us that there's not going to be any labor costs. In this case, we're probably just going to figure out how much she's going to need to pay for material. Now, um the measurement of her kitchen floor is 16 feet long by 12 feet wide okay, so again we could draw that kitchen floor it looks more like a square but see 16 feet long this one looks a little bit longer by 12 feet wide okay and this one's a little bit different from example a because in example a we wanted to put fence all around his rectangular property so we're looking at perimeter. Here, she's gonna put tile all over the floor. So what we really wanna calculate is area. Okay, so let's start with that. And the area of a rectangle is gonna be length times width, right? One of the more popular uh, mathematical formulas that you see in everyday life. In this case, we're told that length is 16 feet, uh, and we're told that the width is 12 feet. Okay, so we're going to multiply those two together. We're going to get 16 times 12. It's going to give us 192 feet squared. Okay, uh, the reason it's squared is because we measured two different, or sorry, we multiplied two different dimensions, length times width. Whenever you're talking about area, your final answer should be in some measurement raised to the second power. In this case, it's feet to the second because uh, the original measurements were given in feet. We know how much square feet. <clears throat> now, we know that the local hardware store charges 350 for every square foot. Okay, so what that means, let's say this is one of my tiles, right? Uh, square foot means that this measures one foot and this measures one foot. Okay, and the area would be one foot squared. So we're going to have to basically get 192 square tiles, right? Uh, because our total area is 192 feet. Each one is $3.50. So to figure out how much um, we're going to spend on material, we're going to have to do the following. So cost of material is going to be how many feet square do we need, which is 192 times how much the hardware store is going to charge per square foot, which we know is 350. So we're going to have to multiply that by 350. And you can go ahead and put that in your calculator. We're looking at 192 times $3.50. It's going to give us a grand total of $672. Okay. So <clears throat> this one was not quite as expensive, um, partially because Tia was doing the work herself, so there was no labor costs also because the material that she was buying was a little bit cheaper than the fencing uh, the wooden fencing they were using for example okay. example c kyle's washer and dryer has broken down and he needs to replace them both he currently has 365 dollars saved up that he could put as a down payment and the set that he saw at the appliance store costs 875 dollars the appliance store will take kyle's down payment and he will have to pay the remaining balance and equal monthly payments how much will Kyle have to pay each month if he plans to pay it off in a year? All right, so um, we know that Kyle wants to replace his washer and dryer. He found the set, so he found them both at the appliance store for $875, okay? So the total cost for the washer and dryer 
is $875. Okay. Now, we know that Kyle is going to put 365 as a down payment. So what that basically means, oftentimes when you're buying something that's sort of expensive, uh, for example, you know, most people don't have $875 laying in, around or in their pocket. So what they do is they'll put a down payment. So they say, here's $365. I'm going to take the washer and dryer home. And I agree to pay the remainder of the amount um, over whatever time they want, how often they want it. All right. So <clears throat> we know that the down payment that he's going to put down. Is three hundred and sixty-five dollars, right? That's how much money he had saved up. We're told that the appliance store is going to take the three sixty-five. That's good, and he has to pay the remaining balance in equal monthly payments. So we want to figure out how much he's going to pay each month if he plans to pay it off in a year. Yeah? But we need to figure out what the remaining balance is first. So eight seventy-five was the total cost. So we're going to subtract. The down payment because that's money that he's already going to pay and he no longer owes. So subtracting straight down, we're going to get $510. And that's going to be what we call our remaining balance. All right. Now, he needs to pay that off in a month. And he's going to make equal monthly payments. So, um, Think about how many months in a year. There's 12. So he's going to make 12 payments that are exactly the same amount. So we're going to take the remaining balance, which was 510. We're going to divide that by the 12 months, right, or the 12 payments. And that should tell us how much he's going to be expected to pay every month for 12 months. All right, so putting that into your calculator, we have $510 divided by the 12 months. It's going to give us. $42 with 50 cents. So this is going to be the monthly payment. And that's your final answer.